If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already. And please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Lusitano. Or that's a close enough approximation as I'm going to be able to do. Thank you, Google Translate. But before we get into the map, this video is brought to you by Northern Farm Sim and Matthew Young. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Lusitano Turno map can be found over at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. This map is an authentic and detailed representation of the Portuguese agricultural landscape. This map includes 44, 44 agricultural fields, Explore and cultivate a variety of crops in 44 fields, ranging from small to medium size, designed to offer a rewarding challenge for all farm levels. 13 factories to expand your farming operations, allowing you to transform your harvest into valuable products. There are nine sell points to sell your products strategically around the map. Enjoy a fully equipped farm with various productions, including livestock, poultry, and more. There is a biogas plant to utilize agricultural waste to produce PGA gas, biogas, a renewable energy resource to generate additional profits. You can sell your stones to take advantage of the option to make a little bit more money from the things you collect off your fields. Bulk purchase of supplies so you can buy lime, seed, and fertilizer from various agricultural inputs. There are three families in town which will buy your products. There is an olive production. We also have grapes and coffee which has been added to this map this map reflects a portuguese style of architecture and immersive cultural rich environment there is diverse terrain with all sorts of small to medium fields incorporated with lots of changes in elevation new products to expand including coffee as i've mentioned already farmers who prefer small to medium sized implements will enjoy this map players who appreciate an immersive farming experience with an authentic portuguese touch and enthusiast of a diverse production and local trade. Now this map does have several required mod, and there's one required mod in that list that I think is gonna stand out like a very, very sore thumb. So we have placeable storage silo, TMR mixing station, seed production, olive and olive picker, oven for cooking and bread, food mixers, chocolate factory, old grain mill, mayonnaise production, firewood production, wired, chicken coop and straw harvest so straw harvest is a paid dlc and it is set up as a required mod so what that's going to mean is you're going to need to have straw harvest in your mod pack and enabled in order to load this map if you do not have straw harvest or you disable it well you're basically going to get this message right here map requires straw harvest do you want to select all required mods? Now, there is going to be a way for you to bypass that requirement if you are on PC. If you are not on PC, if you're a console player, eh, you're stuck. Pretty much, that's it. You're going to be stuck. If you don't have Straw Harvest, this map is not going to be available to you until you purchase Straw Harvest. I think that's a bad move. I really like when maps incorporate paid DLCs because then people who have bought it can incorporate that gameplay directly into the map without having additional expense. But what I don't like is having it as required. Now, typically, when it's not required, if you don't have it, well, it's just not going to appear on the map. It's going to be an empty space. But in this case, it is a mandatory item. And we're going to cover how to make it not a mandatory item here in a little bit. So in addition to those required mods, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. There are additional field info, additional game settings, anima food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, straw harvest, not because it's required, but to see if we have hay and straw pellet support, as well as precision farming. If you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farmer mode. In addition, you start out with starting machinery in all game modes. The only difference is going to be you do not own any land, and your bank balances are going to be different. 
with respect to low powered systems, I had no real issue maintaining a solid 60 frames per second on this map. I did have a little bit of frame drop when I was looking in this direction, but I do believe it was because of these two trees, because as soon as I got to basically this point here, solid 60, no matter where I looked. So it was really interesting. I think it might have been that tree right there, which was causing the frame drops on that low end system, which again is basically using AMD integrated graphics. Now, if you want to take out the requirement for straw harvest and you're on PC, you've got to be comfortable in working with the map zip file itself. So here we have our mod folder, and I strongly encourage you to have something like 7-Zip installed. That's what I'm going to use to demonstrate this quick edit. So if you do have 7-Zip installed, I want you to right-click. We're going to go to 7-Zip, and we're going to say Open Archive. That is then going to open the map up in the 7-Zip window. We're going to click on moddesk.xml, or right-click and pick Edit. From here, we're going to scroll down toward the bottom of this file until we get to the Dependencies section. And here we have all of the mods listed that are going to be required mods. Well, the first one right there, Straw Harvest Pack. What do you think we're going to do with it? We're going to delete it. And then just delete the line back so everything looks just like this. We're going to go File, Save. We're going to close. It's going to say, do you want to update the archive? Yes. It may take a bit longer on your system. Then close that and launch the game. And now Straw Harvest should no longer be required. Now, a few notable things with respect to removing Straw Harvest. If you do remove that dependency and you load the map up for the first time, if you do look at the log, don't be worried. You're going to see several warnings associated with the fact that you deactivated Straw Harvest. Once you save the game after you load in for the first time after deactivating Straw Harvest, those warnings will go away. It's simply because, well, the map is trying to load up assets that are no longer activated within your mod folder, and therefore they can't do that. Something else is at that point forward, once you've edited the file, it's going to show up as needing updated in the in-game downloadable content menu. Don't update it because it's just going to revert back your change that you had already made. Now we've here on the map, let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Now this is a smaller than standard size map. I would say it's probably maybe about 40% what a standard map would look like here. We do have all the standard crops available to us in FS22 on this map, in addition to coffee beans. So we do have a section right here, which are going to have coffee trees. We have olives located right here and grapes located right there as well. With respect to our farmland, we start by owning farmland ID 54. That is the main starting farm as well as farmland ID 51. In any alternate game mode, you're going to be able to buy the main starting farm for just a mere $2.6 million. So definitely start in new farmer mode because you already own this very expensive chunk of land. There is a biogas plant that can be bought for $1.2 million at farmland ID 30. And then what I'm calling the grape farm is going to be available over at farmland ID 16. And that is a mere $1.9 million. So you can see farmland is pretty darn expensive here on this map, at least farmland with structures on it. Let's go into a farmland lease screen, and this is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are. If those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included? Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We can then go and cross-reference that with our field calculator screen, which is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. Now, with respect to our precision farming soil map, this map is making use of the generic soil map that is a part of the precision farming mod. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. Field 32, which is one of the starting fields or the only starting field that we own at the start, is going to be predominantly silty clay. In fact, a lot of the fields around our starting farm are going to be predominantly silty clay or loam. Fields to the north, where we have identified the grape farm, 
that's going to be predominantly sandy loam and loamy sand. We do have the standard base game crop counter available on this map with then entries for coffee beans. With respect to our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us here in FS22, as well as our animal outputs of eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay straw, and grass. We also do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items that are once again available to us here in FS22. We do have the ability to buy bulk lime, and we also have the ability of getting rid of our stones. We have our coffee beans, roasted coffee, and barrels as well for sale. Now, barrels are an interesting production. Excuse me. They're not what you think. And when we're going to get to our production overview, I think you're going to understand why barrels are not maybe necessarily the production that you're thinking they will be. They're fairly profitable, uh, but they're not what you think they're going to be. Now, with respect to our farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell any of our washed root crops by default, nor do we have the ability to sell any of the other platinum expansion production items, aside from the barrel, which again, it's not quite what you may think it is. Now, with respect to our premium expansion production, we do have the ability to sell our premium expansion productions and crops. We also have our ability to, if you're playing with separated manure, to get rid of your separated manure, or if you're playing with straw harvest, sorry, you'll be able to get rid of your separated manure. And then we also have firewood, mayonnaise, baked bread, cookies available. We do have the ability to get rid of our hay and straw pellets if you are playing with straw harvest. And we also have our premium crops. With respect to our starting fleet, we do start out with a fairly large listing of machinery. And you will see multiple Manitou company vehicles listed here. These are forklifts. The map author has placed a forklift at nearly every production location on the map. Everything is owned and none of it is leased. Everything looks to be fairly well maintained. Hilly's crane is an interesting entry because it has been zero months and for zero dollars. We'll have to see if we can find Paul Sis Crane. I think that's the I think that's the crane at the straw harvest hall, actually. We do start out owning a chicken coop, sheep pasture, cow barn, and pigsty at the main starting farm. We do not have any animals, though, at that farm. We do have contracts available to us on this map. And we start out by owning a grass dryer, the oven for cookie and bread production, the pig food maker, forage mixer, and seed production. With respect to collectibles, this map has nine custom collectibles. They are custom cheese wedges. They're technically approximately a half of a wedge or half of a cheese wheel is what we're looking at here. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the New Holland PK4 methane powered small tractor, as well as the Landini Rex 4070 GT. They're going to be located over at the grape farm. We then have the John Deere 6230R, Valtra Valmet 8750, the John Deere 4755, as well as the Massey Ferguson 3670 medium tractor. We also have the John Deere 8R 280 large tractor, the Top Liner 4090H harvester that is going to be paired up with the 4090H grain header. But we do not have, interesting enough, the 4090H header trailer. I think the header might feel a little bit alone. We have our broad. 9070L Rape Harvester, our 1986 pickup truck. We've got our Kloss Karat 140 TD trailer. We have our Hardy Mercury 4000L Grape Sprayer, as well as the MRWK 6000 Grape Trailer, and the MP122 Osea Grape Trimmer. We've got the Select MUL 1000 Mulcher. That's going to be for our grapes as well as well as a Joker 4 CT this Caro and the HR4040 Power Harrow. That's going to be paired up with the Venta 4030 Cedar. We have the Azurt 9 Planter and the Amazon ZGTS 10001 Amazon Fertilized Spreader. 
We have the Punisher Alpine 251 Forage Wagon. The Impress 125 F Pro Round Baler. We have the Joskin Aquatran 7300S Water Trailer. The Anderson RBM 2000 Round Bale Loading Trailer. 900 kilogram front weight for the John Deere. The Olive Picker, which is going to be part of the Olives and Olive Picker mod. And then with respect to mods and DLCs, well, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements, but two of the mods that are included with the required mod download listing do. We have the Olive Picker and Hydraulic Oil from the Olive and Olive Picker mod. And then from the oven for cooking and bread, we have yeast, salt, empty jars. We have a small jug of water. We have a small container of milk. We have chocolate, sugar, flour, butter, eggs. We have a bread box, a cookie box, a bucket, and an IVC tank of water. Now is just as good time as any to talk about the productions that are available on this map. We have a total of 20. I went ahead and purchased all the productions, so let's do our production rundown. We start out with the grass dryer. That's going to simply take grass and output hay. We have our oven for cookie and bread. We can make bread dough, baked bread, cookie dough, and cookies. And for that, we're going to require flour, water, salt, yeast, wood, and then we also have chocolate, milk, sugar, butter, eggs, and empty jars as inputs. We're going to then be able to process our bread dough into bread and our cookie dough into cookies. With respect to our pig food mixer, we're going to require corn, sunflowers, and potatoes. Our TMR mixer is going to be silage, hay, and straw. Seed production is going to be wheat or barley into seeds barrel production and this is what i mean by barrel production is not what you think we're going to take grapes that we harvest from the grape farm and we're going to take them down to our barrel production facility and we're going to get barrels yep we're going to get barrels out of grapes you can just pretend we're, we were making grape juice and we're packaging it in barrels that's 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 the best i can come up with our sugar factory is going to require sugar beet, sugar beet cut, and sugar cane to make our sugar. Pretty standard there. We have our wool cotton. That's going to make fabric. And then our tailor is going to take that fabric and make clothing. Now we're going to find when we get around to the fly around, there's something going on with the spinnery. Because the fabric pallets do not spawn. I've gone ahead and filled up all the outputs so that when we do get around to the fly around and we go to these productions, we'll see the outputs spawned in their output location. But you're not going to find anywhere where there's fabric spawned at the spinnery. As you can see, it's full, 5,000 liters. If something would have spawned here, then it would be lower than full. Just like we have clothing, 26,000 liters, but it's not full because, well, some amount of clothing has spawned into its spawn point. So if you do buy the spinnery, you're going to need to set this to distributing or auto selling because until this map is updated, fabric is not spawning. We have an oil mill for our sunflower, canola, and olive oil. We have our sawmill to make our planks and wood chips. Our carpentry facility is going to further process those planks into furniture and more wood chips. We've got our coffee factory to take our coffee beans and roast that with wood chips. Our cheese factory is going to take our milk and convert it to butter or cheese. Firewood processor is going to take logs and make it into firewood. In fact, we do start out with some wood already in the firewood production. Our grain mill is going to take our normal grains and output flour. TMR mixing station is going to take silage, hay, mineral feed, and straw and make TMR out of that. We have our mayonnaise factory, sunflower oil, eggs, canola oil, and olive oil. And then it's going to make mayonnaise, basically pick an oil, add eggs to it, and there you go. Then our chocolate factory is going to be milk and sugar, and we're going to get ourselves some chocolate. Now, as far as the main farm goes here, we have our sleep trigger right down where we spawn in. So we have our sleep trigger. 
Got our pickup truck. If we back up a little bit, here we have our chicken coop. Now the chicken coop threw me for a little bit of a loop. We have our spawn point for eggs. We come around here and we, oh, well, well, we can't get to our animal buy trigger. Um, I also have a difficulty in not pointing out that for some odd reason, the the window is in front of the chain link fencing and when we get to a certain angle and then it's now it's behind it. Now it's in front of it. It's, it's kind of odd. But at any rate, we have our food trough. We're going to need to come around here and go inside the coop in order to get to our chicken buy point. 500 chickens in total here. And yeah, it's, it's interesting. Depending on where you look, the buy trigger is either in front of or behind the chain link fencing. Interesting. So there we have our chickens. Coming back in here to our left. We're gonna have our seed production. So we have our inputs, we have our outputs. We're gonna have our main farm silo. So we have our dump station there. No doubt the input or output is gonna be right here. Continuing to make our way around, we have then seed storage seed silo so we're dump and fill point making our way around we have a silage bunker here input chaff our pig sty 150 pigs with our food trough our straw trigger inside of there and our slurry point we've got our cow shed 500 cows in here. Our dealer maintenance trigger. Right there. And since it is a dealer trigger, you know, so we can also repaint. We have our milk trigger. Water for our cows, as well as our food and straw. Coming around a corner, this is going to be our EMR mixer. So we have our inputs, we have our outputs, and we have a nice recipe listed there. Our slurry point. And then this is going to be our sheep pasture. We have our pig food mixer. Around the corner, we're gonna find the sheep. One hundred fifty sheep. And inside here, we have our food and our water for our sheep. Now I've gotta wonder. Maybe our wool spawns inside of here. Because I really wasn't able to find a clearly marked area for our wool to come out at. And we're going to see a little bit of a trend with respect to not being able to find clearly marked areas when we get around to various productions as well. Also here on the side of this building, we're going to find storage for pig food. We have diesel storage and we have our straw harvest palletizer. So if you do have straw harvest, well then you're gonna have a palletizer here at the main starting farm without having to spend any money. Now that is pretty much the starting farm here on Luciano. I probably should just give up on trying to pronounce that map. Now right across from the starting farm, we have our dryer. So grass in, 
dry hay out. We also happen to have, well, a hay law. So hay storage in, hay storage out. A dual purpose facility. Here at the lower level, we have our manure heap. This is gonna be for our pigs and our cows. And this heap over here is simply decorational. Let's get a little bit of altitude. We'll take a look at our starting farm once again. We'll talk a little bit about how customizable or not customizable this farm is. In fact, this farm is mostly non-customizable. What you can delete on this farm are gonna be several of the animal triggers are gonna be able to be removed. I wasn't able to remove the cows. Maybe I just wasn't clicking in the right area. I think the sheep were also pretty much stuck. I couldn't get rid of those. Again, I may not have clicked on just the right area to get rid of those. What I could get rid of were basically the storage silos for pig food, seed, as well as the production points with respect to our straw harvest building, our TMR mixer, our pig food mixer. I was able to get rid of the silage bunker. What I wasn't able to get rid of, well, I wasn't able to get rid of any of these sheds. I was able to get rid of the farmhouse sleep trigger but the farmhouse building and structure itself it did remain and i could get rid of the chicken coop but a vast majority of this farm area was permanently embedded within the map now we have a couple ways of getting out of the farm we've got the back road that we took in order to get over here to our dryer and then we have the main lane the main lane is right here it takes us right up here to the main road. And right at the main road then, right across, we have our stone crusher. And this is gonna also then allow us to output lime. And then right next to that, well, this is gonna be our coffee roaster. As you can see. So we have our dump point for our beans. We have our dump point for our wood chips. And then our pallet spawn point is, is under this building. You can see we have our forklift. And then we get our spawned pallets of roasted coffee under here. There are no markers, so you just need to kind of know that they're going to come here under inside that building. We make our way to the west of the coffee roaster. We come to our biogas plant. Our biogas plant has four three-sided silage bunkers. We also have a nice shed for storing of our BGA machinery. We have our dump point for our digester. Then all the other triggers for the biogas plant are gonna be on the other side. Of course, we do need to purchase the BGA in order to make use of it. Now, I was not successful in selling the BGA at all, other than I believe I could sell the silage bunkers. Nothing else here at the BGA was able to be sold. In order to buy this, you will need to buy the land. Making our way to the southwest from the BGA. We're gonna come up to our vehicle shop. So we have our vehicle dealer with our dealer trigger. Pretty large area for our machinery to spawn. We do have a gate to get out of here and then we're gonna to have to navigate the roads with some of these trees fairly close to the road edge. As far as our dealer maintenance goes, well, that is gonna be positioned right here in front of this building. Something else you're not seeing are the markers indicating where that is, but I will tell you that it is located right here. And we have our dealer activation trigger there as well. 
just across the road from the animal dealer. We have a water fill point. And we also have then our animal dealer. So this is listed as animal sale. This is going to be the sell point for grain and other such things here at the animal dealer. We have our bale sell point located right here. Our animal buy trigger. Lovely animated sheep here at the animal dealer. And we're going to now have a sell point for manure. A sell point for potatoes or other root crops as well. Nice, lively animal dealer. So you make our way across the southern edge of the map here. We have our starting farm. We have several fields. You can see the elevation changes we have going on here. The rolling nature of these fields. So you want to make sure you've got some pretty good powered machinery to navigate these hills with loaded trailers and navigate these fields. Coming down here to the southeast corner. That's where we're going to find some productions. Here we have a cell point for our pellets that has been pre placed. This is going to be our sugar cell point and another grain cell point. Let's come back over here. So we are now located right there. All right, so we have our pallet cell point, we have our cooperative cell point there we have seed and fertilizer buying station and we have a lime buying station as well on the other end and then our cheese factory so we have two cooperative cell points on the other side of this building we're going to be able to buy bulk lime bulk seed we were cheese factory, so we were a dump point for our milk. We have our interactive icon. Then we have our pallet spawn point. This time it is marked out. Continuing towards the east. We're going to come upon our spinnery. This is where our fabric should spawn, at least. As it is indicated, it should spawn. We have our interactive icon, and we have our dump point for our spinnery around the back. And then we also have our tailor here at this location. So we're a dump point, interactive point, and spawn point for our clothing. Making our way north along the river. We're gonna make our way into town. We have the three families that was mentioned in the description. Those are three cell points here in town. We have one here along this street. Come over one block. We're gonna find another cell point here. And then just up the road, our third family cell point. And those are gonna be located here on the PDA. We have family Alves. Family more Morina, oh yeah, Morina, and family Alex Alexia. Continuing up the way, we have our fuel point. Further up the hill, this is going to be our barrel manufacturer. Our barrels are going to spawn here. We have our interactive icon. We have our dump point for our grapes into there. So these are just platinum expansion barrels. Thousand pieces of barrels. But we're just going to pretend and imagine. What we have here are, well, it's barrel grape juice. Here we have our olive trees. You're going to need to use these special olive 
shaker in order to harvest these trees. We have our coffee beans, coffee trees here and here. And then we have several areas where we have grapes. Now it's kind of an interesting fact that we are using the barrel production in order to make use of the grapes. Since overall profitability of grapes in Farm Sim 22 is overall somewhat suspect. This is what I call the grape farm. So we're interested into the grape farm. We have our harvester. Then on the other side of this building, we're going to find some more equipment for our grape area. And when we buy the grape farm, we will buy this set of grape vines as well. Flipping around, we have another water fill point. Making our way up this hill. We have the cookie and bread production. So we have our cell wood trigger here. We have a dump point for some inputs. So wise man once said, go back and look again. And I did, and well, here we go. So our cookie dough spawns here. We clear off this area. We're then going to get more things spawning in here. So the spawn point is gonna be this table. For anyone like me who wasn't familiar with this particular mod. to make our way across the northern part of the map. We're now going to come to our TMR mixing station. So we have output there. We have our interactive icon. And then we have our dump station on this side. So we have our silage, straw, hay inputs. This is going to be for our mineral feed. Now right across the way from our TMR mixer, we're gonna have our mayonnaise factory. We have our interactive icon. We have our pallet spawn point for our mayonnaise. And we have our dump point. Our chocolat factory. Chocolat. We have our interactive icon. We have our dump point, and we have our pallet spawn point. Lastly, this is gonna be our oil production so we have our oil spawn point our interactive icon and our dump point continue to make our way across the northern edge of the map we're going to come to our final bit of areas this is going to be our firewood processor so we have our input interactive icon our firewood output we have our wood chip spawn point for our sawmill. We have our plank spawn point. And then here we have, well, we've got several different things going on here. So let's pull up the PDA because we've got a mixture of cell points and spawn points here. So we have wood chip cell point. We have our sawmill. We have our carpentry shop and our firewood processor. So this is going to be our dump point wood cell trigger for our carpentry. Here we have the plank spawn point, the interactive icon, and the dump point for our firewood, or sorry, our sawmill. And then we're going to sell wood chips there. Oh boy, a little bit of a trashy area. And then we're back here to our coffee, our stone, 
and our main starting farm. So let's talk about our scoring. Let's talk about the map a little bit more now that we've covered kind of all of the points of interest in the areas. As I mentioned, this map has 20 productions built in. We have the barrel production, which is tied to grapes. Sugar mill, we have the spinnery, tailor, oil, sawmill, carpentry, BGA, we have the coffee, roaster, we have a grass dryer, we have a cheese, firewood production, rain mill, cookie and bread, TMR mixer, mayonnaise, chocolate, pig food, forage mixer, and the seed maker. We're going to give the map a full point there with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. This is really cool. I like how this is set up. I like a lot of the details on this map, the decorative elements. This map has a lot going for it. With respect to the ability to sell all of our base name crops, animal outputs, and production points. Yes, indeed. We're going to give the map a full point there because we can indeed sell all the base game crops, animal outputs, and production points. With respect to the farm being customizable, we're going to take three quarters of a point off because there's so much at the main farm that is not customizable. It might not be that big of a deal to some of you. It is going to be a big deal to others. So that is why I do point it out. With respect to these large power towers, these do have collisions. So you will need to be working around these or your hired helpers will be working around these as well. If they are close to, or in this case, inside of a field. Buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Indeed, they are. Oh, we went and missed one. Our flower mill. You're stuck just south of the uh, just south of the mayonnaise facility. So we're flower mill. We have a dump point, interactive icon, and harken to farm sim 25. We've got a water wheel operating this whole plant. Trigger interactive areas being clearly marked. We do have issues where we have some areas that are not marked. Other areas are very well marked. So we're going to be taking a quarter of a point off with respect to that. That's going to give this map a full score of four out of five. A very respectable score. I think this is a really cool map. If you're looking to play this map with small to medium sized machinery, if you don't have a whole lot of time to put into working any one particular field, this map should work out very, very good for you. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map. What do you think? If you're from Portugal or that region, let me know. Does this map give off that vibe? And until next time, happy farming.